Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-white Elishnorn Mother of Machines deck that's trying to double or enter the battlefield abilities while shutting down the opponents. So Elishnorn is pretty well positioned when facing a 5-color domain deck, which relies on a ton of ETB effects, with their removal spells being Ossification and Leyline Binding mostly, and their top-end threats Itali and Atraxa also having powerful ETB effects that we can shut down with Elishnorn. And then against the more aggressive creature decks, of course we'll need to keep up by removing most of their threats early on with a laid on arms. Then we also have Ossification that also gets doubled by our Elishnorn so that can take out a creature early, even a Planeswalker. And then late game with Elishnorn in play we get to take out two things at once so that can be incredibly powerful. Then we also have Spirited Companion to draw a card, so awesome once we deploy Elishnorn as well. And then we also have four copies of Ambitious Farmhand, which finds a Plains when it enters, so that's also the reason why we have such a low land count, despite having a curve that goes all the way up to 9 mana for Portal to Phyrexia, is because we get to draw a ton of cards between Companion, Thresher, Overseer, and then our Farmhand just finds a Plains straight up, and can also potentially be transformed into a 3-3 lifelink at some point. Then at 3 mana, Inspiring Overseer gains 1 life and draws a card on a 2-1 flyer, and Comot Thresher, a 1-1 double strike that draws, can also be cast for 7 mana as a 3-3 double strike that draws instead, and we've got a few Power Stone generators that can maybe help us cast the 7 mana Thresher, thanks to the Power Stone token from Static Net, which will gain to XL any opposing no land permanent, as well as generate a tap Power Stone token, and then we also have the Might Stone and Weak Stone itself, which is a Power Stone that can make 2 colorless mana that we can use on abilities and to cast artifacts, so we can even use it on the ability from Farmhand, and of course we're trying to ramp into a portal to Phyrexia at some point, so that's where the two colorless mana can also come in handy, and when the Mightstone and Weakstone enters, either draw two cards or give a creature minus five minus five until end of turn, could potentially choose both or double up on one of the abilities with an Elish Norn in play, so that's also very synergistic. And then we also have a couple of Planeswalkers with the Wandering Emperor at four mana, also great against the more aggressive decks as we can take out creatures while gaining life, and against control it's a planeswalker that's harder to interact with that can generate a steady supply of samurai tokens and then we also have two copies of the eternal wonder which has awesome synergy throughout can make two two double striking samurai then we can also potentially flicker artifacts or creatures so it can take out opposing tokens with that ability or we can flicker some of our own creatures and potentially draw more cards especially with elish in play and the fact that we can flicker artifacts means we can also flicker our own mindstone and weakstone or even our portal to phyrexia and then the minus four also gives gives us access to a pseudo sweeper. We also have two copies of Depopulate as another board wipe, because sometimes against the aggressive decks you can't quite keep up with your spot removal with the laydown arms and ossification, and you just need a reset button, and then you can just chum block with some of your earlier creatures, reset the board, and then take over with Elishnorn. And then topping off our curve, we've got Portal to Phyrexia, I couldn't resist. When it enters, the opponent has to sacrifice three creatures, with Elishnorn that turns into six creatures instead. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, we can reanimate a creature from any graveyard. So especially fun with Elishnorn. If we bring back Komot Thresher, it turns into a 3-3 double strike that draws a card. So you can see how Portal slots in nicely if we can get to it. And then our mana base, 21 planes, because we need a lot of planes to enable laydown arms, so can't afford to play other utility lands, although I did make room for one eye Ganjo still, which can be especially useful against a Haughty Djinn, for instance, as an instant speed answer. Otherwise, all our removal is mostly sorcery speed, so having access to some more instant speed interaction is nice. Of course, the Wandering Emperor can also come in handy there. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Good farmhand to hit our third land for Thresher. And then slowly build our way up to 5 and 6 mana. Turn 1 initiates. Not a must answer. Would rather keep late on arms for like a Thalia. Or just whatever creature they play to start training the initiate. It's gonna be a Vanguard. Better target for sure. Although it doesn't train the initiate right now, so I could still play Thresher. And then next turn maybe have a more efficient turn where we play a on Arms and something else. Like another Thresher. And for now Thresher is also just a good blocker. Maybe they exile Thresher with a Brutal Cathar, 
I exile Brutal Cathar, we get back the 3-3 version. So that would be pretty fun. It's gonna be Adlin instead. Okay, that's pretty scary. But uh, yeah, I'm okay trading for Vanguard and then trading for the token. And then now play Thresher, Laid on Arms, Adlin. And Elish Norn's waiting for us. So Elish Norn and then play Might Student and Weak Student's gonna be pretty fun. Wandering Emperor, or Eternal Wonder, I should say, can also flicker our Might Student and Weak Stone with Elish Norn in play to trigger it twice. So we've got some fun plays available. I'll block and trade. Just want to reduce their board state. Initiate could also technically blow up our artifact. Peacekeepers next. Okay. So if they name Elishnorn, Mightstone can kill Peacekeeper. And if they name Mightstone, I'll just play Elishnorn, which will also stop Brutal Cathar from triggering. So I mentioned I'll name Elishnorn first. Goes for Mightstone first. Okay. So possible to have a different removal spell for Elishnorn than. Although ossification doesn't work, and they don't have enough planes for laydown arms. And yeah, Brutal Cathara, as they'll find out, does not trigger with Elish Norn in play. And uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> gonna be enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is uh, not perfect, lacking some early interaction and don't have any two drops to run out, but we could draw some in the meantime. And at least we are realistically gonna cast our Elishnorn. Garden points towards the domain deck and Elishnorn's pretty good in that matchup, still dies to a Sunfall, so that's the main concern, but it does pretty much blank all their other removal spells like Leyline Binding. They don't get to trigger Atraxa or Itali. Overseer draws. So if we can bait out Sunfall somehow, I'm all for it. Four mana for maybe an invasion? Nope. So we'll get in for two. Play another Overseer. Next turn we could see a kicked Archangel of Wrath take out one of our Overseers to try and stabilize. And then I'm not sure yet if I'm committing Elishnorn or if we uh, take a different approach. So hoping they just cast a Sunfall instead here. Nope. Alright, so I can still be patient since there's still another turn away from Elishnorn or Itali. So I can maybe get in for four, play another creature here. All right, points go to Wandering Emperor. Good to know about. I'm not overconfident. So maybe I'm okay with Elishnorn now, but I think it's still better if I wait an extra turn. You're done. And then for now we can go Overseer plus Farmhand. One or two sequence these a little differently so we don't give them the information that we have planes in hand, but that's all right. So pretty nice board to Sunfall away, if we can uh, tempt them here. Show them how we greet our they went for a plus instead of a minus, so yeah, there's Sunfall, perfect. All right, so now Elish Norn is much more likely to survive, and if it can uh, stick around, we can make their cards a lot less effective. Leyline Binding doesn't work. Itali is just a 7-7, Atraxa just a 7-7 flyer with a couple fancy abilities that we can uh, deal with through ossification. The they could still have cards like Herd Migration to make a lot of 3-3s, but again a 4-7 lines up quite favorably. And we get to untap. Okay, so how do we want to sequence? Farmhand gets two planes, and then I could Static Net. Or I could also vacation here. Could wait to play Thresher for 7 mana. Just want to thin out the deck before we draw. Okay, 
Yeah, let's just uh, static nut here, I think. Can go for Wandering Emperor and a token. Could get rid of both tokens, just attack Wandering Emperor. And then these Power Stones will make it easier to cast a 7-mana Thresher as well. I guess that's that. Okay, so the board is clear. Pwn can make a token with Mirex or play another Emperor, but again Vigilance prevents him from exiling Elishnorn. So as long as we can avoid another Sunfall, we should be okay. Pwn does not want to run out one of their 7-drops. And we found a backup Elishnorn, that's good to have. Thresher draw two. And I could transform Farmhand as well now if I'd like. Still potentially have to be careful around a card like Iganjo in combination with a block, although the domain deck typically doesn't have room for a lot of channel lanes. Let's just uh, ossification the tokens. Got another one in hand, plus a laydown arms. And if they somehow deal with the ossification, it's not like they get their tokens back. Elish Norn goes face. Farmhand goes after Emperor. If they have another one, that's fine. Okay. So now with a 3-3 double strike, we can actually close out the game pretty quickly. Opponent's going to be forced to play Theratraxa just as a blocker, and then we can pretty easily remove it. Opponent cycles Proving Ground, still digging for another Sunfall. But we've got another Elish Norn at the ready. Although we are out of card draw now. That's okay. Transform Farmhand and Smash. Alright, opponent gets one more top deck here. Let's see, see if they can find an answer. Herd migration, perhaps, can uh, stall it out. Yep. So they've got five blockers, can remove two, three. Two blockers versus our three attackers, so that does keep them alive. And I don't necessarily want to waste all my spot removal in case they do end up playing a seven drop next turn. So, what does that mean for us? Maybe just attack with Thresher. Could also offer the trade for Elishnorn. Opponent's gonna be ecstatic to accept. So let's say we attack with everyone. Opponent puts one in front of Cathar, three in front of Elishnorn, and then chumps Thresher. And result is, opponent still has multiple beasts. Nah, that doesn't seem great. I would rather keep a backup Elishnorn in case I find an answer to it. So... If that's the case, maybe just send Komat Thresher. Can trade for two beasts. So we'd love to find some more card draw effects. Opponent's got a Stomper, doesn't trigger. Just a 4-4. Now, of course, I do have the option of casting Depopulate and then playing a backup Elishnorn, but that seems a bit messy. Companion now, a much better draw. Trigger twice. Likely to find more card draw effects. Alright, so we've got double laydown arms. So maybe it is fine to cast an Ossification now. Clearing Stomper and a token. And then now they're unable to take out Elishnorn on the board. So that can attack alongside Cathar. Laid on Arms does gain the opponent 3 life, so it's not like I can just win the game by clearing the remaining blockers. So these can attack. Opponent forced to chump. Okay. 
Okay. So they get one more top deck. And they don't have the mana to sunfall and cast a 7 drop, which would be the worst case scenario. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we enacted our game plan perfectly. Got to bait out the sunfall, which is one of their few answers to Elishnorn, And then got to ride it to victory. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Couple removal spells, companion to hit our land drops, and then Elishnorn to hopefully take over. Alright, so we've got four lands lined up already. Facing mono black. Mishra's Foundry can be difficult for us to deal with since we don't have any instant speed removal outside of Wandering Emperor. But for now we can hit for one, play Thresher. And we could see a cut down, at least go for the throat, doesn't work on our artifact creature. So point actually takes out Companion. I love to see that when holding Elishnorn, which fears go for the throats, but I guess her opponent wanted to clear the board for Liliana. Five. Makes sense. And yeah, our hand does not line up very well. We have late on arms depopulate, but no ossification to exile a planeswalker, so now I'm unable to cast Elishnorn next turn since it just dies to Liliana's minus two. Alright, shield root we can take out in a multitude of ways. And then just gotta find some of our cheaper creatures that we don't mind sacrificing. Alright, Ossification deals with Liliana. So, how do we want to sequence? I cannot depopulate and Ossification. I could lay down arms Ossification, deal with both right now. Or I can use the clunkier depopulate, let them plus Liliana for another turn. I think we just deal with both cards right now. Even though if I somehow save Ossification until I have Elishnorn in play, I could exile two things with it. This isn't how things were supposed to go. Opponent's got a Graveyard Trespasser, that's a good one to depopulate. They discarded a Mishra's Foundry earlier. Farmhand's not bad. Okay, let's just depopulate, and I think I save Farmhand to maybe play after Elishnorn if we draw another land next turn. And I can always play Farmhand first and then Elishnorn. Playing it would be better in the face of another Liliana making me discard. Flash Gorge is fine. And we found the land. Now our opponent could still easily have a go for the throat in hand to take out Elishnorn. But uh, yeah, I think it's still fine to play it out here. And then trigger farmhand twice, hopefully. Nope, opponent's got to go for the throat. Okay, so now it's farmhand versus Flash Gorger and Mishra's Foundry, so we're definitely behind on board. But we have a couple more lands in play. Another Liliana, so they had another one in hand as well. Plains is gone. I'm tired of your secrets. And Foundry can protect Liliana. Might as well play it out since we're gonna have to discard it, so... Yeah, we need a good top deck. With 8 mana, can't quite cast our Portal to Phyrexia yet, so don't wanna top deck it before we are capable of casting it. Alright, now we could top deck it. But our opponent's also closing in on a Liliana ultimate. So need another ossification. Go for the throat, kills farmhand. At least that's three of them gone. But now if we top deck Elishnorn, it just dies to Liliana's minus two. Alright, we're still in the game. Although we're going to be at one life here. And then it's going to be difficult to beat a menacing Flesh Gorger. We don't have to necessarily exile Liliana, could go for Flesh Gorger, but then our opponent can basically have our lands and get either Liliana back or whatever else we exile, so that doesn't seem like a good plan. 
So it will be at one. I need to string together multiple creatures that draw a card, basically. So don't see ourselves winning, but uh, we've got a shot, technically. Alright, Shielder is just gonna drain us to death. GG's. Well, actually, if it weren't for Flesh Gorger having Ward, we could have potentially gained two life before we died, but yeah. Because of Ward, we'll still be dead here. Okay. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a pretty ambitious hand here, hoping to ramp Mightstone into an eventual portal to Phyrexia. But uh, yeah, we've got the tools for it. Lots of card draw, bit of removal early. Now ossification as well, up against Esper. Hopefully this is the creature deck and not the control deck. Farmhand points towards control a bit more. So these might not be at their best. And if our opponent's packing counter spells, it's going to be a bit harder to enact our game plan. But we'll see. We still have a lot of creatures with uh, immediate value when they enter the battlefield. Okay, looks like our opponent's playing kind of a flicker deck themselves. Guardian also solid inclusion in this deck list. But sometimes you don't have a two drop like companion or farmhand, and then it's kind of awkward to have to play on turn three. Okay, so what's next? Probably have to keep late on arms to answer an opposing Elish Norn, since that's probably the only answer we have to it, other than our sweeper. And then for now, I guess uh, Komot Thresher can block Farmhand a bit better. Next turn we could double Ossification if needed. Opponent probably hanging on to a Wandering Emperor, so I don't feel the need to necessarily attack with my creatures. So in the event that our opponent does have an Elishnor next turn, I do want to make sure I hit my fifth planes. So I probably should draw now to hit my land drop, since I won't be able to draw next turn potentially. Okay, so now we can lay down arms a potential Elishnorn. Just gonna hang back, see them play Wandering Emperor. Nope, just cycling a garden, that's fine. And I'll take three. Okay, so what's next? Probably Mightstone and Weakstone can take out Guardian of Girapur, or we can start by attacking and see what's up. And there's Wandering Emperor. So they put a plus one counter on Farmhands. And give it first strike, they get to win that trade. That's fine. So, could still go for the double ossification plan here, which I don't mind. Go for Guardian and Wandering Emperor. Since it's not like if I play Might turn now that I'm uh, gonna be able to play Portal next turn, still have to wait an extra turn. And then we could next turn play a late on arms on a potential Elish Norn and still play Mindstone and Weakstone. It's gonna be a Steel Seraph instead. Okay. Can take that out with our Mindstone. And hit for three. Even though we're not winning the race right now. It's not like I want to hang back and trade when we have a portal we can cast next turn. Sarah Paragon can get their stuff back. But now it lines up perfectly for portal to Phyrexia. So possible that they're not running Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. But still good to keep this in our back pocket. And then we can steal the opponent's Sarah Paragon next turn to replay our combat Thresher. So we'll see if they have an answer to our artifact. And looks like they don't, and they explode. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. 
Got our early removal, companion, hamper is pretty flexible. And then hopefully Elishnorn can stick around to take over. Facing an enchantment deck, presumably, although it could be something else with turn one Skrelv. And I probably just have to take out Skrelv right now, since it's going to protect whatever else we try and exile. I've definitely seen Skrelv in the enchantment deck before. But it could be like a, a Naya human legends deck. Or just green-white humans. Alright, make that some sort of banned legends deck instead. For now, play farmhand, since I definitely want to find another planes. Bring the ending. Okay, I guess it's banned poison. Was not expecting that. Found a land anyways. Play companion. And then Wandering Emperor is not a bad answer to Rock Priest, since it doesn't trigger the poison ability. So I'll take a poison. And then we've got a couple options here. Could block and then use Emperor to put a plus one counter on Companion. Could just minus two on Rod Priest right now, but our opponent probably has some interaction in hand. So, I'm kind of liking the counter on Companion, because that way we are still capable of minusing Wandering Emperor next turn. And if they phase out Rod Priest with a slip out the back, then uh, they don't take out our companion. Run away. I guess I could have considered casting Emperor before blocking. That way, if they countered it with another Bring the Ending, I wouldn't have thrown away companion. Alright, points go to Soul Partition, that's fine. And a Duelist is next. Okay. We've got a lot of options available now, including minus two on a Rod Priest, see if there's a response. And then I kind of just want to play Elish Norn, so next turn I get double the Might Stone and Tweak Stone. Safekeeping on a Rod Priest. Yeah, Elish Norn seems fine, even though I could take out Duelist with either Laid on Arms or Mindstone and Tweakstone. Our opponent's empty-handed, they don't seem like a deck that's packing a ton of uh, removal. So if we get to untap with Elishnorn, we can wreak havoc. Just gotta watch out for something like a Tyvar's stand as a pump spell if we block. Okay, March is gonna phase out Elishnorn temporarily. So they can take out Wandering Emperor, that's fine. So we don't take any poison and uh... Yeah, good luck to our opponent now. Can Might Stone take out Duelist and draw two? And yeah, opponent's gonna concede before we get a chance to do it here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not incredibly fast. Um, lots of 4 and 5 mana cards, only 2 lands. Although the third land for Thresher helps us get a fourth land. So, yeah, a bit risky, but I think it's worth it. Elishnorn, of course, our build-around card, so if that gets to stick around, it can take over pretty quickly. And with a Depopulate, we're not super likely to get run over by an aggressive deck, unless we miss a ton of land drops. Opponent is black-white, Farmhand was a perfect draw. Gets us a 1-1 and a land. So black-white tends to be more mid-rangey and controlling. Which means we'll have time to get to 5 mana, although they're also likely to have answers to Elishnorn. For now attack, play Thresher. And then hope that they present a target for Static Nets. Okay, Mightstone's nice. So our opponent is Esper Callers, so it could be a dedicated control deck. Third Elishnorn, that's all of them. Let's attack. No play from our opponent. I could play Static Net just to get a Power Stone token to set up Might Stone and Weak Stone. And I'm not opposed to it. Sure. Because otherwise I'm not doing anything next turn. Alright, get in for three. They're likely to counter Might Stone and Weak Stone if I play it. 
So I could go for another Thresher, but then we're potentially overextending into a board wipe. So we'll give this a try. Dissipate. All right. There's a Sunfall. Okay, a land for Elishnorn would be nice. At least I can play Thresher using the Power Stone here. And Farmhand to hit our land drop. Okay, so we're on track to cast Elishnorn. Although against this Esper Control deck, it's unlikely to stick the landing. And our hand's not particularly exciting. Another Sunfall. Okay, we're clearing a path for Elishnorn. And now it's time to see some spot removal like go for the throat. Opponent goes digging with Deluge, so maybe they don't have an answer yet. We'll start by attacking, and then we can play Companion second main. Okay, that works, so now Companion is likely to draw two cards. If they answered Elishnorn, I would have preferred playing another Elishnorn before Companion. Ooh, nice. Portal to Phyrexia is one of our top-end cards. So we'll pass a turn. Opponent could animate some of their Incubator tokens. And that flashback Deluge is gonna hurt. So I still don't love my position. It's gonna be difficult to resolve Portal to Phyrexia. Opponent main phase, flashing back Deluge. Okay. I'm gonna be one mana short of casting Portal next turn. So I really want to draw something I can cast that maybe... Draw some cards. Okay, Overseer counts. So I guess we'll uh, play that now. Also Vacations, an answer to the token, and we've got two of them now. Seems better than Late on Arms. Get in for five, force him to cast a sweeper. Still didn't draw the land to cast portal to Phyrexia. And our opponent does have the mana to cast a sweeper with counterspell backup. Shield root we don't mind seeing. And Eternal Wonder was an excellent draw as well. Okay, so bait out maybe a counterspell with Laid on Arms. So our opponent's not gonna budge. Can attack. Make them animate their token to block companion, perhaps. Alright, opponent's got a Wandering Emperor. That also keeps him alive. But now the coast is clear to resolve Eternal Wonder. I am almost sad to see you go. And then, kind of like Flickering Companion. I've made it just in time. So we get to draw two. And hit our land drops for a portal. So now we've got a Planeswalker in play that they need to deal with. Still threatening a lethal on board. And if we can cast a Portal to Phyrexia, that would be fun. Voidrend, a nice answer, but could have also taken out Portal. Now we don't have any way of removing the Incubator token before they get a chance to block with it, unfortunately. So let's see, do we attack with Companion as well? It's probably worth it, so Elishnorn at their face. Companion goes after Wandering Emperor, so they cannot minus two again. Opponent jumps Elishnorn. So, let's see. Do we go for Portal? Opponent still has Counterspell mana up. So I don't think I go for it yet. Just make them answer this Elishnorn. And pass for now. Okay, another memory deluge. Can they find a sweeper? Best case scenario, opponent taps out for another shielded. Can easily answer the token. And a comma thresher. Alright, so I don't think it's time for portal, just too expensive. It's the only play we can make, and if it gets countered, we don't get to win the game. So let's start with ossification and see if that prompts a response. Then the next step is probably to attack. If they kill Illishnorn, I'll play another one instead of playing Thresher. 
Although we actually have enough mana to do both, potentially. Another Wandering Emperor, okay. They could mine us on Companion and stay alive, or they can make a Samurai and jump. So now I can play a 7 mana Thresher. Draw two cards. And our own Wandering Emperor is going to come in handy as an instant speed threat. That's harder for the opponent to deal with. So, Companion down, opponent back up to 5. You're done. And an Edict deals with Thresher, I want to say, even though we've got another Elish Norden in hand. And Revelry back up to 9. Anything else? Celestus. So they still have 3 mana up. Step 1, probably Ossification. Hope they counter it. And then we can resolve Portal. Alright, so we get to exile both tokens. And then I can keep up Wandering Emperor as an extra threat. Okay, opponent passes, flash an Emperor. Opponent strokes. And we'll attack for four. Right, they've got to go for the throat. So let's see, do we have the mana for Elish Norn and Portal? I doubt it. Gonna be a little bit short. But I can go for double Elish Norn here, assuming they counter the first one. They don't. So we'll pass a turn back. What a close game. But that flashback deluge might be the turning point now. If they can find some cheap answers while keeping up counterspell mana. Overseer is nice, so get in for four. Potentially see a response. Okay, Void Rends. So now we have two options. I can go for Portal to Phyrexia, have it resolve killing the 1-1. One -one. Hope they don't have another Void Rends to take it out. Haven't seen any other answers for a portal. Or I can go Elish Norn into Overseer, presents a board presence that threatens lethal and draw two. I think that's still better here. Because if we go portal and they just have another Void Rend, we didn't really make any progress. Another Planeswalker is nice, and we've got 25 cards remaining, so we'll play another Overseer. Okay, so we've got some more tools in hand. Celestus so transforms. Okay, so step one, probably attack with everyone. See what their response is, and then take it from there. The might cannot block, so... No need to do anything before attacking. Yeah, it's weird how we've not had a great opportunity to cast Portal yet. Despite it being an awesome card if it gets going. Okay, that's uh, Wandering Emperor number 3. Exile's Overseer. Keeps him at 2 life. So what's next? Eternal Wonder likely gets countered, but it is the type of card I would love to resolve. So maybe try a cheaper Thresher, so I don't spend all my mana. Gets dissipated. So then now, I could still farm hand and Eternal Wonder. I haven't played a land yet, so even farm hand plus portals an option. That resolves. Could transform the farm hand as well. Twenty cards left. And then maybe I do go for Portal over Eternal Wonder. Because Eternal Wonder might just be the more important card to resolve now. But of course this would be fun to get in play as well. Okay, we resolve it. Celestus gains them one, lets them draw. 
So now if they have a board wipe, at least Portal can get Elishnorn back. And then the game goes on. They've cast two Deluges with Flashback, so they've seen pretty much most of their deck by now. Oof, farewell. But not getting rid of artifacts, that's curious. I guess by clearing the graveyards, Portal doesn't have anything to get back. Opponent wanted to keep the Celestas around. Yeah. So now I cast Eternal Wanderer, hope it resolves. If it doesn't, we don't have any pressure. Okay, that did resolve. And then just gonna make a Samurai. I can flicker my own portal, but there's nothing to take out. Okay, with 19 cards remaining, this is going to be an interesting game to play out. Cut down answers our Samurai. Although Might's not enough to take out our Eternal Wanderer at least. Definitely okay casting a Depopulate just to clear the Might token. Might stone and weak stone, that's not bad. So that wants to just draw two cards here. Companion's not bad, can draw as well. And at least if it dies, we have something to return with Portal. So probably want to depopulate first, deal with the Might. Then play Companion. And likely just make another Samurai. Okay. Show them the edge of your blade. Opponent makes another Might. Yeah, the decision to keep Celestus is potentially paying off here. Since Portal hasn't done much for us. Oof, Jace. Yeah, that's just game over here. Mill is for 15. Well, this was one grindy game, but unfortunately we drew a few too many cards and that farewell was a big turning point. Can uh, get back one of our creatures that the opponent milled, just so we can die on our own terms. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Farm hands into Overseer. Alright, let's see what we're up against. Green-white, could be enchantments. Yep, so this is definitely a matchup where we'll need some removal, since the opponent's gonna outpace our creatures pretty quickly. At least Elish Norn stops their ossification from working, and that's their main removal spell but they can grow their creatures in other ways, like a Reign of Truth. Not a card you typically see on turn 2, better if they have a more developed board, so don't really mind seeing it now. And there's Ossification, perfect. So yeah, if we can curve Elysian Orn into Ossification, that's one easy way to win. Laid on Arms, also an excellent pickup. So I'm liking my chances now. Weaver of Harmony. We probably want to take out... And do I chump now already? Nah, I can take four. So I want to save Ossification until after Elish Norn, and then for now just lay on arms on Weaver. Opponent's got the protection spell, it seems. Okay, safekeeping. So now I might regret not jumping last turn if our opponent goes Ossification, copy the trigger with Weaver, exile both of my creatures. So I probably have to play Companion as an extra blocker, even though I wanted to keep it until after Elish Norn. I think I can still afford to. So let's say our opponent goes Ossification, deal with my two creatures. This is a 4-4. Four, four. Then next turn, they'll be able to attack with Portrait, but... I think we'll still be alive, and I probably need this companion to eventually pull ahead once we deploy Elish Norn. But now I'm definitely happy to chump. Okay, it's gonna be Hallowed Haunting instead. That one we cannot answer with Ossification, so that one's a little scarier.
but we can try to keep up with all the tokens, I guess. Pass a turn. Just want to preserve my life total and then hopefully stabilize next turn. Another Reign of Truth, yeah. So Overseer is going to be on chum blocking duty. Take eight. But now we can try to take over. Classification, deal with Weaver and Portrait, probably. Could play Companion, hope to draw a land, and then I can still play another Ossification. Late on Arms also counts. Okay, so we'll get in for four and lay down the Visitor. And now with a portal to Phyrexia to work towards, we should be alright. Just want to hang on to removal spell at all times in case your opponent finds a Catilda, which can fly over our blockers. But between Ossification, Emperor, and a Laid on Arms, we should be alright. So bye bye, Visitor. Interesting attack implies maybe an Iganjo. I have a backup Elishnorn, so that seems like a fine trade. Yep. Opponent's got one card left, we're building our mana up to get to portal, and then for now we can attack if they block Flash and Emperor for a plus one and first strike. And our opponent explodes, awesome, green-white enchantments, definitely one of the top tier decks in best of one standard. Alright, so we got to see our mono-white Elish Norn deck in action, and I'm pretty pleased with how the deck performed. Far from being the best deck in standard, has a few weaknesses, since we don't have access to any instant speed removal, some of the creature combo decks like Mono Blue with Hardigen can be pretty tough, and other control strategies like we saw that have access to multiple sweepers and planeswalkers can also be a difficult matchup. But against a lot of creature strategies, we can usually survive until we get to 4-5 mana, deploy Elish Norn, and then from there take over by doubling all our abilities. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.